Okay, hello there, I'm Dennis. Welcome to my channel. And in this video, we're going to install OpenBSD 7.0. They just came out with this release, and I wanted to try it, and you might say I'm a day late. <laughs> but I was curious about any changes. So I'm going to get started here. I got it set up in my virtual box. Uh, under settings, we got system. I'll give it two cores of my processor. Motherboard, I've turned the floppy off. Did not enable the EFI. I have turned, gave it six gigs of RAM. Turned the video memory all the way up. We're going to stick with the default video. And I've attached the ISO. All right, let's get started. And I need to get in the, there we go. And if you can't guess, I, I recorded this using simple screen recorder. And so I could fast forward some of the more detailed uh, the, or the installation. So the keyboard default is US. If you want to see a list, you can type in an L and press enter. But you need a host name. And then we're going to set up our network. In, in this VM, it's recognizing EM0. We're going to auto configure that. We're not going to bother with IPv6, give it a root password. We are going to start the SSHD daemon by default. And we're going to expect to run the X window system. And I'm going to select yes here to allow the Xeno DM to start us up, at least to begin with. Create a user here. Do it the password. I'm going to allow root SSH and then we're going to select our country and time zone. I'm in a US central, so that's correct. Now the disk is SD0 and that is correct in this virtual box. Yours could be a lot different if you're installing on real hardware. Here we're given the options of, in, of installing the sets. OpenBSD recommends you get them all, especially for newer users. And if you are a more experienced user, you can pass on some of them and get them at a later time if you need to. So we're done with that. We're going to continue without verification. Then we're going to install the BSD, those sets. And if I understood right, all we need really to get a system going is the BSD, MP, and the base. I believe that's right. So this installation will uh, depend a lot, of the time-wise will depend a lot on your internet speed and the speed of the servers. So we're going to be done here, and we're going to, it's coming up to the part where we're going to reboot. It's basically adjusting our kernel to fit our needs here. And we're going to reboot. And we'll go into the virtual box and remove the ISO. Power off the machine. Go in the settings here, go down to storage, right click on the ISO and remove it. Say OK and start over. Or start up our freshly installed B Open BSD. You now have a functioning system. And since we selected yes on Xeno DM, that's what we are expected to boot into here. Installing some Intel firmware. It's correctly selected that I'm using Intel. And I guess it's picking that up through the virtual box. Not sure. Either way, it's okay. <laughs> now, right here, it's checking for available binary patches and and I don't recall seeing this on my last video it may have been there and I just missed it and then cut it out and I didn't see it in the 
video. I just, I don't remember seeing this. So this may be a new feature of the 7.0. And if it is, that's great. If it's not, that's great. <laughs> okay. Ah, there we go. And you can actually uh, edit this Xeno DM. I've seen some videos where they did that. I haven't tried it yet, but maybe one day. The first thing we're going to do is sign in as a super user, give it our password, tell by the hash mark that we are in super user, run syspatch. And this is going to look for any patches that are available since the time of release. Or fixes, if you will. And it takes a minute. It's got to look at our system and then see what it needs. And there you go. Now you can see why I sped all this up. <laughs> I must say, the whole install took about 45 minutes. So again, we're relinking to the new kernel. We're going to have to reboot. It'll even say reboot to load the new kernel. And you may not have to, but I'm definitely going to. And I would advise to do it. OpenBSD sure as this seems to work like you expect it to. All right, we're back into our Xeno desktop manager. Sign back in as root. Now, sudo is not installed by default, but do as is. It'll, it'll just have to be configured. So pkg underscore add base hyphen u that checks all the software that you're installed on your system and it and it looks for updates if they're there it will update them and i just run that just to make sure that everything was new so here we're going to get gnome gnome terminal gnome tweaks gnome extras nano and firefox I did not get sudo. We'll be using do as. See what I can do to make the screen bigger. There we go. Ah, I can see it a lot better. <laughs> Actually runs the risk of being a little too big. Take your glasses off, guys. <laughs> so I sped this up 1500 times 1500 in the in Caden Live. And so this is what we're seeing here. Although this is the entire installation, I didn't cut any of it out. And I found some of them very interesting. And I'll make little notes here of some of the ones I was watching and looked them up and seen what they actually do. And you do get, this is still GNOME, and you'll notice it's GNOME 40, 40 40.4. PO, I'm not real sure. I guess that may be patch zero. <laughs> I don't know. What you're mainly looking here for here is okay at the end of every line. <laughs> GDM doesn't exist at this point. There it is. It's coming in. Mozilla. Dictionaries. This one was curious. Lib ASS. <laughs> and I noticed there's a tracker in here, and I was interested in that, and there was an explanation of it. You think it says tracker or like that? I, I, I tend to look them up to see what, if I find them or I see them, look them up and see what they do. And you'd be surprised, most of them are very innocent. Like here it says telepathy. Well, that. In the previously in my life, when the 
computer was using telepathy, it meant it was reporting back to somebody, Microsoft, and you had no control over it. And here, you just saw the explanation. That's not what's happening here. There's telepathy mission control five. <laughs> it's an account manager. I, I rolled a little wheel on my mouse and it took us off screen for a second. <laughs> There's another one, a tracker, it's called. Tracker miners. See, those sound suspicious on the top, but when you look them up and see what they actually do, not all of them are bad. And I said not all of them, all the ones I've looked up, I should say. Here's a cool one, Pi 3 Jedi. You'll have to look that up because I I do I did, but I didn't include it in the subtitles. Maybe if I think about it or I hear myself talking, I'll put it in there. Awesome. We got through. You can see the following new rescripts were installed. We're going to make some modifications to our user and add them to some groups. So the command is user mod space hyphen capital G, the group name, and then the username. So we're going to be the operator, staff, and games, and users, or, yeah, users. And there is no video category or user group in OpenBSD. All right, so we're going to do the RCCTL command. Or use that utility. We're going to disable and enable some services. The first one we're going to get rid of is XenoDM. GNOME comes with GDM and we're going to use that. So we're going to disable XenoDM. Then we're going to enable multicast. Message bus. Bahi Damon. The last one will be GDM, the GNOME Desktop Manager. Let's clear the screen. Now let's configure do as. Do, do as is a program that you can use instead of using sudo. And in here I'm going to give permit, persist, keep environment, and the username. Here's explanations of what those are. If you want a lot more information on OpenBSD, Look at my first video and YouTube video and you'll, I'd, I'd be hard pressed to cover anything in there that, in here that wasn't already in there. That's why I looked at some of those items that got installed during the GNOME installation. All right, so we're in our login.com file, which is under Etsy. We'll add GNOME colon backslash enter tab colon data size hyphen curl equals 1024 megabytes. Enter tab colon TC equals default colon. Oh, oh to get out of here. Control O to get out, write this changes, enter to confirm, control X to get out. Now we're going to reboot and we should be booting into GDM versus uh, Xeno DM that we were before. First two times. This is it. 
stage and the installation where you're going, you can do it, come on. <laughs> and we're in luck. So this is the good desktop manager. It's actually a GNOME desktop manager. This is the tour that you're going to be welcome with first time you log in. We'll just briefly run through the tour. It's here. If you want to, if this is your first time, you might want to take your time and read it. I read it, <laughs> even though it wasn't my first time. So you can click on the activities button there and type in your search here. And it's a little laggy for some reason. We'll go to our settings, display, and we're going to change this resolution. Let's select 1920 by 1080, say apply. That should give us a full screen resolution. We're going to keep these changes and then boom, there we go. So this is the settings panel. We'll come back to that. Click on activities. Go to the show applications. In here we got contacts, weather, clocks, maps, books, photos, videos, calculator, characters, a builder for building apps, I believe, terminal, the known terminal, archive manager, system monitor, the next one was settings, but let's open up the monitor. Fresh boot, nothing installing, no programs running, 1.4 gigabytes. That's not the best. Document scanner, which I believe was a, uh, what was that? I had to look it up. <laughs> Document viewer was events. Evolution is for calendars or yeah, keeping notes or on your schedule. Um, tweaks came in. All right, so here, when you first open it up, it's here telling you that they've moved and they recommend downloaded GNOME extensions from FlatHub if your distribution does not include it. Well, if that means you have to use Flatpaks or FlatHub, you probably can't use it. Home tweaks with all of its really cool items. Okay, so let's go back up to the activities window or button. Click on all or show applications. Let's open up a terminal. A little lag there, and I think that might be a VM. Let's let's find out what kind of kernel we got or what kernel we do have. That's seven point zero. You name all A will give us OpenBSD one uh, generic MP number two. Uh, a little disk free information here. This is sixty four bit AMD sixty four bit, right? Still one point four on the RAM usage. It's consistent anyway. Back to the activities window. We click on system monitor. Man, like I thought you could only have one instance of system monitor open. I don't know why you'd want two. Let's go back into a terminal. And this should be really the first thing you ever do under any, with any installation of any distribution, whether it be Linux, Unix-like, or Windows, you should do a upgrade. And we're going to say, and OpenBSD uses syspatch to do that. And since we did that on the first reboot, it, we don't no longer need it. So let's just check and see if any of our packages need, need to be updated. BKG underscore add space hyphen U will give you, it'll go through and look at all the software installed on your system. And if it needs to be updated, it'll update it. Now this is going to take a while depending on how long you've been running your system and how much software you have installed.
So let me see. This is the GNOME. Let's see what they use for a web browser. I think it's just called web. And I was right, it's called web. And I did some research on this a long time ago, quite a while ago. And it's actually not a bad choice for a web browser. It's not going to have as many features as, say, Firefox. Let's open Firefox up. That was one of the few things we installed during the initial setup. Click on the plus button, tab works. Oh, let's see what version this is. We go to right click there and tell it to show the menu bar. Go to about Firefox. When you open this up, it's 94.02 built for 7.0 open BSD. Now, if you open up that version or about that way, uh, most systems you'll see it, it's checking for an update. Files. Open that up. See what their icons look like. We got music and our quick launch down here or our dock. There's our calendar. It's not a bad looking system. There's a, quite a bit of stuff that you could install or and you'll have to customize as well. You got XD VI, that's for video. Here's their version of the task manager, I guess not task manager, the performance. So we got CPU and memory. And this is showing about 28% being used and that's what System monitor is showing 1.7. This is just called files. Let's see if it'll let me open up another instant of terminal. Not that way. Oh, let's do it this way. Right click on the terminal that's already open and say new window. There we go. Make it a little larger. And if I use this, I would uh, make that permanent. <laughs> so this is how you search for packages. PKG underscore info space hyphen capital Q and we're going to look for the PKG manager and it's not going to let me because the database is locked doing the update above there so I'm just going to stop that. There should not be any updates to any programs. We just installed them. Let's run that search again. PKG underscore info space hyphen capital Q. Now I'm pretty sure I used this and in version 6.9 this was available. Let's check Audacity. And it is available and they're using an older version, which is 2.4.2, .2, which is fine. It works just, it works well. All right, let's see if Caden Live is available in their regular repositories. And the answer is yes, it's 2104.3, which is not the newest version. Let's check Simple Screen Recorder. Not in the repositories. I've seen it as SSR, so let's check that. And not available. So Simple Screen Recorder is not available, at least doing it these two ways. Let's check OBS hyphen. See if it'll pick up anything that starts with OBS hyphen. 
And the answer is no. Let's take the hyphen off of it. And the answer again is no. It does have OBS in the middle of that word. OBSD. OBS Studio, the proper way. Look at it. Look for it. And it's not available. So Simple Screen Recorder nor OBS is going to be available. Let's look up a graphics uh, editor, Krita. Krita is available, 4.4.8 or 4.48. <laughs> Let's check Blender. The answer is yes, version 2.92. Let's check to see if the GIMP's there. Graphical image manipulation program, and it is available. Look up XFCE4 hyphen pulse audio plugin, and it's not going to be available. I just gave it a shot. There is a volume icon up there at the top right, so you don't need it. I just was curious. Wasn't available, duh. <laughs> All right. Let's look up DSB Mixer again. We're not, we don't need it. I'm just curious. Is it in the OBS, OpenBSD repositories? The answer is no. All right. Let's look up FFmpeg. I seen that come in during the installation. And here you got FFmpeg normalize, which is important, and you would need that if you're kind that burns audio CDs. That's a program to equal out the volume levels. And you can use it in K3B. Let's see if that's available. The answer is no. Let's see. Resero. No. How about XF Burn? No. Nope. Although it took quite a while to look for it. <laughs> DVD, kind of a strange one. Let's see if that's available. And the answer is yes. Curious that none of the top three were uh, available, but DVD is. Let's check DVD Styler just by chance. It's a really good uh, system to make DVDs, movie DVDs, and it is available. So we've got two curious options there, DVD and DVD Styler. A3B, Brasero, and XF Burn not available. So I guess that does this video. I thank you very much for watching. And uh, this is Gnome 40 on OpenBSD 7.0. Bye.